This is the Ross Developers Podcast, episode 105. Hello, Ross developers, and welcome to the Ross Developers Podcast, the program, the podcast that gives you insights from the experts about how to program your robots with Ross. This is Ricardo from The Construct, and today I would like to dedicate this episode to all those people that are thinking about building fleets of heterogeneous robots for automating whole businesses like a pizzeria, like a hotel, like a hospital. So if you are thinking about this kind of projects by using ROS, then this episode is dedicated to you. Very good. In this episode, actually, we are going to learn a lot, a lot about how to manage fleets of robots using ROS too. That's why this episode is dedicated to that kind of projects. And also I would like to show you about uh, one of the of the trainings that our company, The Construct, is doing in uh, the month of September. Actually, we are doing one in August, but it's already fully uh, booked, and uh, so there are no more spaces. But we are repeating this online. It will be online. You don't have to attend to Barcelona. And it's going to be on the last week of September. You can check the details on this link. And there we are going to be uh, teaching you how to do navigation using ROS2 for multiple robots and also how to use the open RMF system that Open Robotics has developed in order to manage the fleets. You will be using real robots like we have here. We have recreated here in Barcelona a cafeteria and two types of robots, Rick and Morty, two robots that serve coffees on, at this cafeteria. We have all the elements there, and also you will be using simulations in order to learn how all these interact together. This is online, so you will be connecting remotely to our robots here and managing them there. Okay, so have a look at the show notes, and you will see more details and what is happening, what is going to happen in this workshop, Okay. So, yes, having said that, uh, let me go here to the, yes, uh, here. So let's start with the podcast of today. And today we are going to learn a, a first experience of, uh, a, um, of one of the developers of the Open RMF. So let me introduce you, Yadunan Bihai. Yadunan is one of the main developers of the Open RMF framework at Open Robotics in Singapore. He is also the technical leader of several other software projects using ROS2. What is OpenRMF? Why do we need it? How does it work? So those are some of the questions that today we are going to uh, ask to Yadu, and he will explain us. Welcome to the podcast, Yadu. Thank you very much for having me here, Ricardo. My We're pleasure. fans of your work, and it's my honor to be here today. Oh, okay. And congratulations on reaching 100 for the number of podcasts that you've made. Yes. You've yes. exceeded that by now. <laughs> yeah. 105. It's, 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 there you it's, go. It's, yeah. Whoa. And I, thank you very much. It's, uh, this is my honor because you are often robotics developers and of uh, ROS, the system that we love. And I always say that we are we have a company that is based on ROS. So our company is based on ROS, not because ROS is the there is a business in ROS, but the other way around because we love ROS. So we try to make a business of this. But the first thing is love, you know, is love. So thank you very much. That's awesome. And, and we totally rely on companies like yourself that do the good job of promoting ROS and getting more developers on board. So thank you also for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, then also want, want to say about this uh, sweater that you have there. It's awesome. It's about Humble. Yeah, this is our latest sweater from the Humble release of ROS2. And can the audience, um, can the audience buy it online? 
Yeah, so usually before every release, we put out a link where people can purchase the, the swag from the latest Ross release. Uh-huh. So I, I, maybe we can still buy some for Humble. I'm not sure, but um, th- th- there should be a good chance. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I will check for the link this, and I will put it on the show notes of the of the podcast, so the people can go and then try to buy there. Perfect. Great, great. Then uh, let's start because the audience here is uh, is very excited to know about Open RMF. So, wh- what is actually Open RMF? Sure. Um, so, Open RMF uh, stands for Open Robotics Middleware Framework, and here the open is meant to signify that it's fully open source, just like ROS and Gazebo, and it's also very modular, similar to ROS and Gazebo. And although we call OpenRMF a middleware, um, it's actually a lot more than that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, fundamentally, um, it allows various incompatible systems like robots from different companies, uh, doors, lifts, uh, maybe building infrastructure systems uh, that all have different protocols to now readily communicate with each other. So this is uh, really step one for interoperability, and that's the middleware part. But more importantly, once these systems are connected, it does a lot more. It brings in its own intelligence, and it facilitates the management of these different systems uh, for facility owners. And uh, if you look at the core capability of OpenRMF, it's really to allow different brands of mobile robots to share resources um, in their deployment. So these resources can be spaces like hallways or floors that robots need to navigate through. Uh, or could also be sidewalks if we're doing outdoor robots. Um, share so yeah, share spaces, then maybe share access of infrastructure like doors, uh, lifts, because robots often have to pass through doors, take yeah. lifts to go to different levels, um, and uh, also communicate with other building infrastructure systems that could be there. So these are all resources that we can share. Another good resource is charging stations, maybe parking spots. So where should the robot go wait once it's done with once it's done with the job? So all of these things are managed by OpenRMF. And it does this by directly communicating with the robot or with the fleet manager of the robot if it comes with one. Ah. So that's one of the core uh, capabilities of RMF. On top of that, RMF also has a very powerful task management component. Um, so you can use the framework to design or define practically any kind of task. Um, say you want a robot to go to a station A, pick up 10 items, go to station B, drop off seven items, and go to another station C, drop off remaining items. Uh-huh. So you can construct and submit such a task in runtime, uh, and OpenRMF will receive this task, automatically figure out which robot from which fleet is capable of performing this task, So it won't assign this task to a cleaning robot. So (laughs) it'll assign it to maybe a delivery robot. Uh And then it will manage the execution of this task. So it'll guide the robot in fulfilling this task, talking to other external systems along the way. So if if the robot needs to go through a door or take a lift to reach another level, it will facilitate all of that. Once it reaches the stations, if it needs to talk to a robot arm to pick and place something onto the robot, it will do that. And, um, And in general, it'll provide overviews of what is happening and uh, basically allow operators to manage um, robot operations in their facility. And the cool part about this is that OpenRMF is designed while being mindful that, you know, different robots from different bands will come with different levels of uh, access that we have uh, through software APIs, for example. Maybe some brands will only allow you to read their positions. You can't instruct the robot to navigate somewhere. Uh, This is usually the case with AGVs, Autonomous Guided Vehicles. Or sometimes the robot might just come with an API that lets you send it a navigation request or maybe a set of waypoints, and then the robot will use its onboard navigation stack to go through those waypoints. But in both cases, we're able to integrate these robots with RMF. And RMF can still deconflict these uh, shared resources between the robots. So in this case, for example, we have an AGV that we can only read the position from. And we have uh, AMR, which we can control. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we can deconflict navigation conflicts by routing the AMR around the AGV because we recognize that, okay, the AGV is something that we can't really command at this point. So this is really the 
some of the great features and capabilities of RMF. And like I said, everything is very modular, so you can pick and choose what you want to use. We also supply a lot of tools uh, to help system integrators and developers set up RMF deployments. <clears throat> Excuse me. One of these is our traffic editor. It's a web-based GUI that you can use to uh, to annotate a 2D floor plan of your environment. You can say where the walls are, doors are. You can uh, draw traffic graphs, and then you can export these graphs that um, the robots that are integrated with RMF can eventually use to do the, to do their planning. And with Traffic Editor, we also provide tools to automatically take these 2D drawings and then generate very rich 3D environments from them, which is often a pain point when we want to simulate large worlds in Gazebo. <laughs> Um, so that's one of um, that's another problem statement that we're addressing here. So it's really powerful and continuously improving. Okay, and uh, that is all for the podcast because we have learned everything. In this. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> Just joking. Okay, awesome. Well, okay, so so many things that you launched there and, and so many questions that arise. And so let me skip the script that I have here because I'm going to ask you about <laughs> sure. one of the things. It, so it sounds amazing. And I'm also, uh, especially I'm amazed about uh, what you mentioned of the managing the type of access that you have to the different robots. So some robots, they allow you to control the common bell and the odometry, so you have access to that. But some others from other manufacturers, maybe they only allow you to get the position, uh, like a localization that they are managing themselves in the inside, right? And then you, you with the open RMF, so it takes charge of this and then plans accordingly with those constraints, different constraints, right? And what is that's the right, that's exactly right. But how is right, the intelligence? I do want to point out. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I do want to point out that mm -hmm. um, even to control the navigation of the robot, we don't require access to command velocities or odometry or any other fundamental controls. Okay. Uh, we mostly typically send uh, high-level goals to the robot, mm -hmm. and the robot will use its own navigation stack to do uh -huh. the planning and local control to get the robot there. Uh, yeah, by by using the uh, free fleet system, right? Yeah, free fleet is one great example. But um, say you have a robot, usually it has a REST API where you can use this API to send it a goal. Uh, so we could also integrate such type of robots uh, with RMF. Okay, so even um, could be a robot that in the inside is not running ROS. Exactly. That's that's a fundamental requirement here because we recognize that robots can use ROS. They may not use ROS. Uh, we still want to integrate all these platforms with open RMF. Uh -huh. So we only deal with high-level APIs that the robot offers. Uh, okay, okay. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, so then my question about all this was how... Which algorithm are you using to to make the intelligence? So do you have uh, like a, a cognitive architecture inside implemented there that uh, takes, or is a planner, is a typical planner? How, how do you do the, the selection of which action for which robot? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think the key differentiator with OpenRMF versus other systems it's, is that it's highly, highly decentralized. There is a central traffic schedule node that keeps track of where every robot in the facility is trying to go. But the node that submits this information for a robot is specific to the robot fleet itself. So depending on every fleet that you have, you will spin up its own fleet adapter node. And this fleet adapter uh, can be configured with the capability of the robot. If it's a what we call full control, where we can send path level requests, mm -hmm. uh, we use the full control adapter. We also have a traffic uh, traffic light adapter where we can only <coughs> say pause and resume for the robot, or we can even do read only adapters, which is the AGV scenario. So each of these adapters are very easy to configure for your system. And uh, more importantly, it takes on the responsibility behind the scenes to do a lot of the complex tasks, such as path planning, uh, task execution, resolving negotiation conflicts over shared resources. So all of that is taken care of by the back end of the API. To integrate your fleet, all you would need to tell RMF or the fleet adapter is, hey, what command should I send to ask my robot to stop? Or what command should I send to ask my robot to navigate here? 
Um, but going back to your question of how RMF achieves all of this, mm -hmm. uh, fundamentally, we have a very, very sophisticated uh, multi-agent path planning algorithm uh -huh. that my colleague, Dr. Gray, has developed. And um, this, like I said, um, is baked into the fleet adapter itself. Mm -hmm. So every agent will plan for their path and submit this path to the traffic schedule node in RMF. And the traffic schedule node is continuously monitoring for whether there are any potential conflicts within two paths. So these are conflicts over space and time. And if there is a conflict, the schedule node will notify the fleet adapters of, hey, you have a conflict with this other fleet, and this is the path for the other fleet. So can the two of you come together in this negotiation room and mm -hmm. try to find an amicable solution mm -hmm. given each of your capabilities? And this traffic negotiation protocol is another fundamental uh, bread and butter of RMF. Um, <laughs> and uh, basically, we provide utilities for generating these uh, compromises and amicable solutions that both fleets will accept and then finally execute. So all this is happening in a very decentralized manner. And we, are, we fully accommodate uh, latencies, delays in communications, or any other lapses in uh, communication between the robot and RMF. That's impressive. This, as you mentioned, for me, that also the meat of the of the system is the the, the core that because it's the one that is going to at the end decide who does what. Right, that is the most important point. <laughs> who does what, and also in a decentralized system like. So, are we talking here exactly. about Bitcoin? I'm sorry. <laughs> Is it just a, <laughs> a bad a joke? <laughs> yeah, because you mentioned this yeah. <laughs> decentralized and just very bad joke. Yeah. Okay, I will cut this. That would be a good uh, startup, RMF with uh, decentralized Bitcoin or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, great. And and then, um, so you have mentioned uh, the, the structures. Uh, can you explain us how these idea about developing this framework uh, started? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the idea actually came from a real-world problem statement from Changi General Hospital here in Singapore. Uh, so Changi General Hospital, or CGH, came to us with this problem they're facing with operations. So currently, they already have a AG, AGV fleet to deliver food from their kitchens to the different wards in the hospitals. Mm. Uh, they're also looking to integrate other fleets of robots to do deliveries for perhaps surgical equipment, maybe linen and other, other items. Uh, but right now they've realized that in order to have these different AMRs also operate with the AGVs in the same space, uh, the, the, the only way they can do this is either time separate the operations or perhaps space separate them. Because uh -huh. they've realized that these two ro types of robots, they just don't talk to each other. And in these kind of old hospitals, the hallways are pretty na narrow. So when you have uh, two robots coming down the same hallway from opposite directions, what, they, what will often happen is each nav stack will see the other as an obstacle. <laughs> and they will just wait for the cost map to clear or maybe wait for the robot to move around. But since these hallways are narrow... It doesn't happen. And <laughs> what, ha what, what really happens is a deadlock. So these robots just remain stationary and someone needs to come down and physically move them apart. Uh -huh. So this deadlock was a big problem in managing robot traffic. <clears throat> Excuse me. Apart from that, um, um, infrastructure such as doors and lifts are pretty precious in hospitals. Um, so typically what happens is when you have a single fleet that needs to integrate with a lift or a door, the, the specific vendor will come down and maybe fix a box that will talk to your uh, lift or um, door PLC for specific commands that their robot talks to. Mm. But then when you want to integrate a second fleet, you can't do that. You need to put in a second box, which may not even be possible because you've ran out of dry point contacts. Uh -huh. uh, so this is a challenge. We're not able to scale the number of fleets because of hardware limitations. Um and so, yeah, this is where OpenRMF came in, this idea of can we have all these systems on the same platform? So you do a one-time integration of a lift or a door with RMF, and then every other robot fleet that is integrated with RMF just sends the same ROS2 message to open or close the door, 
and then RMF will take care of opening and closing that door, taking the lift, uh, etc. Um, so yeah, this, these are real world problem statements that have motivated the development of RMF. And the Singapore government is actually very forward looking, as you can tell from their push to develop open RMF. Yeah. Um, but they're now looking to expand or try to deploy uh, open RMF in as many healthcare institutions as possible, or that will benefit from such applications. Wow, awesome, awesome. And, and can do you remember when you started de developing this? When all this is started? Yeah, so I think the early, early groundwork was probably done in 2018. Uh -huh. And uh, so we're about four years in four now years. where RMF right. is ready for deployment. Oh, and we're actually deploying open RMF in many facilities here in Singapore and also other parts of the world. And can I ask you, um, what is the largest uh, fleet that you have been, or group of robots, the larger number of robots that you have been managing with the open RMF? Yeah, that's a great question. And it's hard to be specific here because of agreements we have with... Yes, that's why I, I don't know if I can ask. I, it's something yeah. that appeared, popped in my mind just when you were... Right, no, but it's a, it's a fantastic question. Yeah. People always want to know how well does this <laughs> scale. And uh, with real-world deployments, I think we've seen about three or four different fleets. And each fleet has X number of robots mm -hmm. all integrating with our open RMF and being commanded by open RMF. In simulation, we can obviously push that limit to much greater extents. And that's kind of the goal with open RMF as well, because when we look at the simulation scene out there, it's very hard to simulate very large buildings, multiple robots, etc. You need a lot of compute power. So one of the objectives of open RMF is also to simplify these type of simulations. So we're working with uh, Gazebo, which was renamed from Ignition previously. Mm -hmm. um, and the great part about uh, Gazebo now is you can swap the plugins that you want to use for physics or maybe rendering or anything else. <clears throat> and for our type of applications, we really just care about robots responding to commands and executing those commands. So the exact ground contacts and other physics is not super important to us. So we've developed something called the Trivial Physics Engine uh -huh. with our with our uh, colleagues in California. And um, we can use this plugin for very large scale simulations ah. where the physics engine now simply updates uh, visuals of the robots. Oh, that's a very cool idea. Yeah. I had no idea that you have developed this. It's, it's called the Trivial yeah. Physics plugin. The Trivial Physics Engine. And this engine. is something you can just add at runtime. So you just do RMF launch and then you just do physics engine and then it's just a launch parameter. Oh, that's awesome. That's a very cool idea in order to overcome this problem because you, as you mentioned, it's, it's correct. It's, you don't need to know about the contact points and the forces and all these things because your, your application is something else. It's on another level. But then you need to have multiple robots, multiple stages, uh, uh, multiple floors, multiple elements, uh, and, and exactly. that's what you need to have. Ah, okay, that, that's cool. So this, this is something that we can add to Gazebo. But are we talking right. of Gazebo, Gazebo or Gazebo Ignition? Uh, we're, I'm talking about Gazebo Ignition, okay. but uh, maybe for the rest of this conversation, when I say Gazebo, I'm referring to, to the former Ignition. Exactly. And when I say Gazebo Classic, that's ah. referring to the old Gazebo. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so yeah, so then OpenRMF works with a, a Gazebo Ignition, right? Um, actually, it supports both, both. Uh, Gazebo and Gazebo Classic. Mm -hmm. uh, so all of our demos that we have in our public repositories can be launched with either. Mm. Um, so the, the developer is free to choose. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah, in the, in the workshop that we are preparing, the summer school, we are using the yep. Gazebo Classic yeah, at that point. Yep. Yes, but, but yeah, but it can be used with uh, Ignition. And w what are other requirements for working with OpenRMF, software requirements? Sure. Um, <clears throat> so OpenRMF, um, a lot of the core packages that do the planning, uh, negotiation, the task planning, uh, all of this is all of these are actually pure C++ libraries. So they mm -hmm. have no ROS2 dependencies on them. Mm. And honestly, anyone can implement an OpenRMF version that uses any middleware. 
But to really simplify things and provide a good out-of-the-box experience, a lot of the interfaces are ROS2 based. So we provide these wrappers, ROS2 wrappers around the traffic planner, around the schedule node, et cetera, uh, for easy integration. So as a result of that, to run any kind of RMF deployment, you would need to have a suitable ROS2 distribution. Uh, so we, we currently support Foxy all the way to, so Foxy, Galactic, and Humble now. Mm-hmm. So Foxy and Galactic would essentially run on Ubuntu 20.04, and Humble is designated to run on 22.04. Mm-hmm. So in terms of actually using RMF packages, we provide uh, binaries uh, through the ROS build form. So as long as you have your uh, packages repository set up to get packages from the ROS build form, you can just do sudo apt install ROS gal- galactic RMF, whatever, and that's going to install RMF awesome. for galactic. But uh, we also typically operate with source builds because we want to use the latest and greatest features of RMF. Um, so yeah, we support source builds on Galactic and Foxy on 20.04 and Humble on 22.04. Ah, okay, okay, great. So we don't need anything special, just uh, an already working ROS2 in, um, installation and that's all of the latest from Foxy yep. or, or on forward, right? That's right. So we, we would strongly recommend using Galactic. Mm. Um, and if you're building from main, that should also build with, if you're building from source, that should also build with Galactic. Mm. Uh, but yeah, the recommendation is Galactic or Humble. Okay, okay. Yeah, in the summer school that we are delivering, it's going to be used with Galactic. Yes, yes. It's That's great. Great. Uh, then uh, let me see. Uh, uh, um, um, yeah, some other Curious question. So you, you mentioned that yeah. you you started uh, four years ago of development, and from this it all started from this requirement from from the Singapore hospital. Hospital, and then how many people is devoted to the development of the Open RMF? Sure. Um, so I think over the years, RMF the develop. Well, let me phrase it this way: um, s- since the initial R and D grant. There have been a number of people part of the RMF development, mm. um, not just open robotics, but we also have a lot of collaborators such as CGH, uh, Changi General Hospital, IHIS, Hope Technique, and other government institutes here that we have collaborated with to develop RMF. But from the open robotics side, we've been primarily leading the software development. And it's been a team of over 13 engineers working on open RMF full time. Uh, but now, since we're more in the deployment phase, uh, the numbers and manpowers allocation has slightly shifted. So we're, we still have a core team that works on new feature development, but a lot of us are also focusing on commissioning and deployment of RMF in the facilities here. Uh, okay, okay. Interesting, very interesting. And uh, let me see another question. Um, okay, so you explain uh, but i'm not sure about the different parts that it has the open rmf you you explain some of them but i don't know if you are missing some of them because i know that there is like for example like a web page that allows you to control and specify tasks so can you explain us a little bit what is this for and also any other component that you uh, do you think that it could be interesting for for the audience Absolutely. Um, so like I mentioned, a lot of the core business logic uh, of RMF can be found within certain C++ packages. So these would be RMF traffic, RMF task, RMF battery, uh, and maybe a couple others. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, we have certain packages like RMF fleet adapter, which really provides that easy to use integration point for your fleet with the rest of the RMF ecosystem. Mm-hmm. We have RMF traffic ROS2, which is the ROS2 wrapper around RMF traffic. So there are nodes there for the central traffic schedule that maintain traffic schedules from, sorry, that maintains a a database of trajectories of different fleets. And it does the conflict checking and the notification and the negotiation and all of that. Apart from that, we also have an RMF task two, a package which has certain nodes that spin up uh, what we call the RMF task dispatcher. And this is really the entry point for external tasks that get submitted. Uh So when you say, hey, I want a robot to go to this waypoint, uh, the message can be sent to the dispatcher. 
And then what the dispatcher does is it gets into this mini bidding with all the fleets that have been integrated with OpenRMF. Mm-hmm. So it will put out a bid notice saying, hey, we have a request for this task. Can you do it? And if you can do it, how long will it take you to do it? So then the dispatcher will collate all this information and then decide which fleet to award the task to. And all of these criteria for how to award, how long to wait for, all of this can be customized and specified by the user. So that's great. Uh Uh, And I would say a a core bare bones deployment of RMF would probably require the RMF traffic schedule node. We would need the task dispatcher, uh, the different fleet adapters for every fleet. If you have certain doors or lifts you want to control uh, or integrate, you would need adapters for those. Uh, And then of course the dashboard that you mentioned. So we have the RMF web uh, dashboard. It's a web-based dashboard that can run on your browser or, or even on your computer. And uh, it's really great. You can use it to get, get a good overview of, um, of your robotic operations. You can submit tasks, see how robots move around, and really interact with uh, different robots. And this is actually one of the core problem statements that came to us as well. Typically, when we have facilities that want to use different fleets of robots, each fleet has its own dashboard. Maybe it has a dashboard, maybe it doesn't. So you have to train your operators to use every single dashboard. And then when you want to send a command to a specific robot, you have to log into that dashboard. And then you need to make this decision on, okay, which robot should I assign this task to? Um, So now with OpenRMF, we've kind of made that really simple for operators. We have a unified dashboard that gets information from all different fleets, cleaning robot, patrol robot, Um, food delivery robot, whatever it is. And then you can simply say, clean this section of my floor. That's it. And then OpenRMF knows that, okay, I have only this cleaning robot that can do this. Or if I have more cleaning robots, it will find which one is the best to do this job, Mm -hmm. assign it, manage the execution, and you have all the updates on the same dashboard. Awesome. This is awesome. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's impressive, this one. Yeah, so you could also just take a standalone robot, like a turtle bot, mm-hmm. which doesn't have any sophisticated um, fleet manager. Mm-hmm. You can use our open source adapters for this robot, integrate with RMF, and now through this dashboard, you can submit the complex tasks we talked about before. Like maybe go to your cafeteria, get some item, go deliver somewhere else, uh, going through lifts, doors, etc. And um, so you can execute these really complex workflows with very simple ro- ro- robots. Wow, wow, impressive. That's very, very cool. That's very cool. I'm, uh, I'm eager to see this uh, working on, 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 on different environments where with heterogeneous, for example, in our case, for the summer school, at this first edition that we are doing, we are only using two robots of real robot, but uh, next edition we are going to add uh, um, the one that opens the doors. So the robots, they can move away from the cafeteria, for example, to go to the area of the, where the students are. And then we can serve uh, coffees outside of the cafeteria area, but also in the other rooms of the, our building. There and then I'm eager to see that because we still we didn't have the time to implement that part, but uh, eager yeah. to see. Looks awesome. That sounds awesome. So you could actually even do some kind of mixed reality demo. You have physical robots moving around, but you've configured the arm in traffic editor. You've configured a door to exist somewhere exactly. on the lane. And then you can have a simple gazebo simulation of open RMF running with a single door. And you can still see your physical robot waiting, asking the door in gazebo to open. The door physical robot can go through, and then the door in gazebo can close. Wow! So that's one way you can work around not having a physical door uh, oh. on site. Ah, okay, okay, that's just a very for, good point. Just for educational purposes. Yes, yeah. that's, I didn't think about that. Oh, that sounds very cool. Taking note here for uh, to improve <laughs> our course. Very good, very good. And um, then let me see um, another question. Um, okay, so uh, by default, when you install, uh, all, let's say, all the packages that you provide for OpenRMF, then there are some demos included. Mm. Which are those, uh, those demos and which cases they are uh, attacking? 
Yeah, so so the demos uh, in op- in Open RMF RMF demos package is really meant to be a great entry point for uh, either developers or facility owners to see how Open RMF can be deployed. Uh, they're actually based off real environments. So if you try the Office demo, that's actually a digital twin of the office I'm sitting in right now, uh-huh. including my desk and my table. <laughs> um, so we have a lot of demo worlds there that kind of mimic real-world deployments that we've done. So we have the office demo. We have an airport terminal demo. There's a hotel world. Uh, there's also a clinic uh, with multiple levels. Um, so all of those demos kind of showcase unique capabilities of open RMF. And depending on the capability of your physical hardware system, you can run these different complex demos. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you that they are a very good entry point, you know, to understand. Because first, with Open RMF, so okay, so you know a lot about that. But when we, the regular ROS developers, we start seeing the Open RMF, it's a little bit complex to understand the concept and why and which situations. So now that you explained, it's very clear, okay? But when we go to the page, to the web page, you know, and you see, oh, that's a little bit complex to understand. What is this for? So the demos, we run the demos at the construct, and the demos, they, they, they allow us to understand, okay, okay, very good. So this is the, those are the use cases, some use cases, and then I can uh, project into my own necessities in uh, based on this so now i understand if i need this open rmf or not and uh, very cool absolutely and for example the office world demo that we have yes we can use the same launch files and everything to run uh, office demo in gazebo but then we simply need to change one single parameter which is use sim time we set it to false, false. and all of a sudden we can run the real robots in my office here uh, um, that same launch file Yes, um, yes. So it awesome. really showcases the power of ROS in general. Yes, exactly. The same exactly. code that runs in simulation runs on the real hardware. Exactly, exactly. Wow, awesome. Very cool. Oh, one thing. Um, uh, yeah, about those demos, are they real cases scenarios? Well, oh, sorry, that's the question. I'm stupid because, yes, one is your offices. Mm-hmm. This is the one that I personally launched it and was playing around. And I saw the others, but yeah. uh, the the other ones, uh, any of them are one of the os- hospital of Singapore? Um, so none of the demos there exactly represent or are digital twins of sites we've deployed OpenRMF mm. for confidentiality reasons. Yeah. But um, they very closely mimic actual deployments that we've done with OpenRMF. Okay. And uh, one question we often get is, hey, I see a lot of demos in simulation. Mm. Um does this really work with hardware? And I think uh, a big challenge with that, or, or uh, unfortunately a limitation has been with our marketing efforts, uh-huh. um, and partly due to some restrictions we have with our collaborators on what kind of recordings we can put up. Uh, but as engineers also, we're not very good at documenting <laughs> features really well. <laughs> so all of our documentations are recordings of simulations, but um, these deployments are actually currently running in many facilities in Singapore. Um, the hospital is definitely one of them. Uh, in fact, um, more recently, we've deployed two fleets of teleoperation robots and cleaning robots within a special COVID treatment facility in Singapore. So these are purpose-built facilities where patients are housed. And um, you actually use uh, people are using OpenRMF to send out teleoperation robots that uh, kind of go to the patient. There's a tablet on them, and then the care provider or their family can talk to the patient, and then they can go to a, and then and then the robot can go somewhere else, and then it's avoiding conflicts with cleaning robots and disinfection mm-hmm. robots at the facility. Uh, so actually, our collaborators chart, which is the lab in Changi General Hospital, will be giving a Roscon talk on their experience with deploying open RMF at this COVID treatment facility. So that should be a good, um, that should be a good example for real world deployments. Um, but in our open RMF GitHub page, uh, we do have, um, in our readme, we have linked several open source adapters for different hardware. So these are robot hardwares, door, door hardwares, et cetera. And if you look, we have a bunch of adapters from for Gaussian robots, maybe auto, 
uh, Cleopath robots, Mir, Temi, uh, Magni, uh, a lot of different robots. So these these should be good indicators of what physical hardware that we've successfully integrated open up RMF with. Yeah. Uh, awesome, awesome. I, I I will be there at Roscon, so I will be paying attention to those uh, speeches that you have. But we are going to talk about the Roscon in, in a few minutes. But before that, I want to ask you one question that popped up into my mind now when you were mentioning about the conf confidentiality. So um, yep. what about, so the people maybe they will be worried about uh, this aspect. So we, by using open RMF, so what about the information that all the software is capturing from, the, from its work during this environment? So is there any way to prevent that this information is going somewhere else apart from the the company that has deployed this system in a facility? 100%. And this is the question we most often get as well. And uh, the answer is that this is specifically why we've built OpenRMF on top of ROS2, mm. which uses DDS as its default middleware. And with DDS, we have almost military-grade encryption and security policies that come with it. Uh, so every RMF deployment uh, actually has very strict, um, um, how do I say this? It has very strict DDS configurations in place such that only certain participants can publish certain topics mm -hmm. and only certain participants can subscribe to certain topics as well. So even if you somehow manage to hack into the uh, facility System. and you get on the same network, even if you do a ROS2 topic echo, you won't be able to get any of the topics or services or actions, any of that. Um, and all of this is purely due to the security that comes with DDS. Um, and we've actually worked together with the ROS2 security working group mm -hmm. to create an office demo, which is on our GitHub, which has the security deployed. So if people want to get a flavor for what that deployment would look like, Uh, we actually have instructions on how you can generate the security tokens for DDS and then configure your RMF deployment to use these security tokens. Mm -hmm. um, so we have encryption on the DDS level, but typically for RMF deployments, we're also running open RMF on either on-prem cloud services or maybe other, other types of cloud platforms. Mm -hmm. And typically you need some form of authentication to get access to these platforms, either through a VPN, which we strictly control, um, or perhaps some other token authentication. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Then, based on what you answer, if I understood correctly, we can actually launch OpenRMF without having this security layer activated, like a normal ROS2 program, and then... There is also the option that you, we have to configure in a different way by using the security tokens in DDS. Is That's that exactly right? right. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, great, great. Just to clarify then, if we yeah. install directly OpenRMF as it comes uh, with the packages, uh, APT uh, install, then it, but the default one is without the security in order to simplify and make the things work and so on because when you add security on top then there are more chances that many things doesn't work just because they cannot communicate because they are not configured proper way right uh, but uh, yeah and i have to i have to clarify that sure, this sure. security configuration is purely a runtime so it's the same package it's the same code you don't mm -hmm. need to modify any of this uh -huh, okay but uh, when we when we do the launch of rmf We specify a securities file uh, that has all of these credentials and, yes. and authentications in place. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, certificates, basically. Yeah, exactly. That uh, was explained to us on another previous podcast by Matt Michael Arguedas, who is yeah. w working on, on ROS2 security, uh, security group there. Yes. Okay. So, Absolutely. yeah, I'm yep. putting this just to let the the audience to know. Oh, you want to know more about this? You can listen to this other podcast <laughs> episode. I will put it. Yeah. No, it's it's great. It's in the great. show yeah. notes. It's on the show notes. Great. Then uh, let me see. Um, so yeah, about security already explained. Um, then, okay. So. Uh, what about uh, what is still missing in OpenRMF, and which are the plans for the future? 
Yeah, so I think over the past four years of deployment, a lot of the core capabilities of RMF have been ruggedized and production ready. Mm -hmm. But we're constantly coming up with new features uh, based on interests from our collaborators. So often we'll speak to new customers uh, who will identify perhaps new use cases for OpenRMF. And this typically leads to perhaps new features or upgrades that we make to OpenRMF. Mm. And we do have a public roadmap of this in our GitHub repository. Mm. Um, and we also have a living document, which we're calling the multi-robot book. Um, so if, uh, I can send you a link later, but if you go to this book, it kind of gives you a very nice introduction to ROS2, RMF, how you can install it, and what is the plan for RMF. It includes the roadmap. But uh, we're looking at a lot of interesting problem statements right now. One of it is to deal with more uh, free space planning. So usually when you have really large environments, which are not like the tiny hallways we're talking about, AMRs have plenty of room to kind of navigate around. Mm -hmm. So there's no need for them to kind of move through these straight line graph, uh, straight line trajectories that we decide. So we're making a lot of improvements to our planning systems mm -hmm. to take into account free, plan, free space planning capabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, and with that, we're actually even looking at how can we closer integrate with the navigation stack, so navigation two. So maybe we can get obstacle information from the cost maps that robots are using and directly build in our RMF planning algorithms to utilize that information. And if one robot has this information, the great part about RMF is being able to send this information nice. to other systems. So maybe you have a robot far down your hallway that detected a big blockage in front of it. This information can be propagated upstream. We can get another robot that was also supposed to go there to now take a different route. Yeah, so it doesn't so have kind to of go. Hive, hive mind capabilities is, is where we're going at with open RMF. We're also looking at how we can make our task definitions even more general. Um, right now, we rely on being able to define tasks as a sequence of events that need to be hap that need to happen. But we're looking at how can we define tasks in very general terms of what needs to happen, such that two or more robots from different fleets can collaborate to complete the task even. So that's another exciting capability wow. we're looking at, and. Uh, I think documentation is definitely number one on our list. I think a lot of people agree that the documentation and marketing material is not that great. But you should talk a lot of cool kids. You should talk to us. We are the experts on that. You should talk to us. We're so happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we need more people like you to disseminate good information about Open RMF because it has a lot of capabilities, very feature rich. But unfortunately, we've been so focused on development that the documentation hasn't caught up. So we're hoping that this interview and potentially even the Roscon workshop that mm -hmm. we're doing this year can help raise awareness. Great, yes, because it's well-deserved. I think that this project is going to be one of the big things in this year and the next year also in ROS because it's awesome how it is allowing to people to deploy those robot, um, how can I say, the, 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 what we are dreaming of, you know, that the robots, many robots working around and doing the things, doing their things, and then we don't care about it, and somebody is managing all that, and it works, you know, so it's going into that direction. Awesome, awesome job, awesome job. Yeah, absolutely, and if Ross was that enabling technology to get a single robot to work, mm. OpenRMF is that enabling technology to get multiple fleets of robots to work. Wow. That's how we like to think about it. I think that this is the quote. This is the quote, yes. <laughs> so I think this is the one that has to go there. If Ross won, it's so, so cool. It's so cool. Great. Then, uh, um, yeah, so you mentioned several times about the Roscon. So what, what, what about this? What about the Roscon that this year, 2022, is being delivered at Kyoto, Japan? So what are you going to do there? Yeah, so on day zero, we're very proud to have our whole workshop on Open RMF. So it's going to spend pretty much the whole day. And participants of this workshop will get to understand what Open RMF is really about, some of the motivations, the capabilities, different real world use cases, and all the utilities that come with Open RMF. 
it's also going to be a very hands-on session. So every participant will be guided through setting up their own RMF deployment. Uh, this would include things like annotating the traffic maps with traffic editors, uh, automatically generating our 3D simulation environments, and even writing a small fleet adapter to integrate your own uh, imaginary fleet with OpenRMF, and then get all of this to run with robots in simulation. And if resources permit, we'll also try to get participants to work with, uh, work with real hardware that we'll have on site. So hopefully you'll be able to control real robots. Awesome. 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 But also you mentioned, that, so that's the workshop. This is a workshop that you, you are explaining now that is on day zero of the Roscon before the actual Roscon starts. But then also you have some talks, right, on, on the other days? Your colleagues. Yeah, there's, uh, there's actually a number of open RMF talks uh, at, happening at Roscon this year, uh, some by external collaborators and some by uh, our colleagues at Open Robotics. Um, so we actually have a talk uh, focusing on the flexible task framework we currently already have in Open RMF. So my colleague, Dr. Gray, and I will be presenting on how Open RMF is capable of accepting these runtime generated tasks or runtime defined tasks, how do we make sense of what this task means? Mm -hmm. And then how do we further do the task allocation between the fleets of robots and moreover execute these tasks? Uh, so we're really excited to talk about this. This was a big feature that got merged earlier this year. And we really think this would be the key enabling point of open RMF for different deployments. Because previously the type of task that we could support was very rigid used to be defined in a ROS2 message, but now we're using uh, other transport definitions to describe these tasks. Mm -hmm. and, um, and tasks, as I mentioned before, can be described as a sequence of events that need to happen. Go here, do this, then go there, do that, wait for something to happen, then do this. And all of this can be then planned for, mm -hmm. allocated, and executed. So we're really excited to talk about this. Okay, definitely I will meet you there because... I have my, uh, so the concert have his own booth, its own booth there, but definitely I'm going to close and then go to this, uh, to this talk at, that, at the proper time on the booth. That booth will be closed. For, for listening That's to you. Awesome. Yes, yes, very good. And um, then what else? Oh, yeah, so this is a very important question for people that are very out. So... Where can people find you and your company? <laughs> you don't know <laughs> what is <laughs> his company is Open Robotics. Then, so where can they find you? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, as, as Ricardo mentioned, we're Open Robotics, uh, but specifically for Open RMF, we have our own uh, GitHub organization, github.com slash open dash RMF. Mm -hmm. So once you go to this web page, you will see two pinned repositories. One of them is RMF, and the other is RMF demos. Uh, so if you go into the RMF repository, this kind of has instructions and some information on open RMF. Mm. But we also have a discussion board, which we encourage people to send us tickets to. And we're typically very quick to respond. Uh, the tickets can be as simple as some problem you're facing with open RMF, um, or maybe uh, you want to discuss a certain concept, you want to understand how something works, or you want to propose a new feature. All of this can go into that discussions board, and we really welcome new tickets there. But uh, for more overviews of Open RMF and Open Robotics, um, you can find us. <clears throat> excuse me. You can find us at openrobotics.org. We also have a dedicated work page called uh, dedicated web page called uh, www.open-rmf.org. Uh, with dedicated information on open RMF. And um, yeah, those are those are great places to find us. And you can also find me on uh, LinkedIn or Twitter or GitHub and shoot me a message. That's perfectly okay. Awesome. Thank you. Then I will put a link on the show notes to all those things that you mentioned. So in order to for the people to be easier to find and then uh, so just to simplify, you know, to reduce friction. <laughs> Okay. That sounds amazing. Thank you. That's all for the podcast interview. Thank you very much, Diadu. Thank you, Ricardo, for having me. It's been a pleasure. And that is all for today. So 
remember that uh, the, if you like this podcast, then you can give us five stars on Spotify, or on iTunes, or wherever you are listening to this podcast. And yeah, you can send us uh, your suggestions for other for other possible interviews. And also, you, I would like to know about what do you think about the podcast? How can we improve it? What do you like? What do you don't like? Etc. Etc. And yeah, great. So that's all for today. See you next week with another podcast and another lesson from the experts. And until then, keep pushing your Ross learning. The Rush2 Intermediate course covers how to create launch files for Rush2 using different formats, like for instance Python, XML, or Yarn. You will also learn how to work with parameters in Rush2. The course also covers how to manage threading in Rush2 using executors, or how to handle callbacks using the callback groups. You will also learn about a couple of very important concepts in ROS2, such as the quality of service and DDS. Finally, you will also learn how to work with managed nodes in ROS2. Start learning now!